This is the Mighty Z of Capital Chaos TV, and we're hanging out here with Mike of uh, Kill Switch Engage. How's it going, Mike? Very well, very well. Fun tour so far. Fun, fun tour. It's been a while for you guys, eh? This is uh, the halfway point, about two and a half weeks right now. It's a five-week tour in total. So, But for us, we've been on tour since February last year. So yeah, it's been a little while. We're ready for some time off, but uh, this is the best way to end a touring run for a year. It's, uh, it's out been with our friends. It's been a while since you played a... Uh, Oakland or the Bay Area. No, you played, uh, I'm sorry, you played San Francisco last year, right? Yep. Uh, let's see. I, I believe we were out with um, Five Finger Death Punch and we did the Trespass tour in this area. Oh, okay. And I, I, the last time I saw you was at Slim's where you were doing the, uh, the, the anniversary of Alive or Just Breathing. Is that right. right? Yeah, that was a fun, fun time. Uh, that was our first tour with Jesse back at the helm. Okay. And um, we had a really good time playing that record. It was the 10th anniversary, like you said, and uh, hopefully we'll do it again in another 10 years. And it was like uh, the cream of the Boston Bruisers in a way. You had a, a Caro and a Shadows Fall. Shadows Fall, yeah, yeah. Uh, we tried to pick bands that kind of represented the sound from back then when we were doing that record, and Shadows Fall was available. And our good friends, Akaro, um, Jay Fitzgerald, our drum tech, who used to be in my old band, Overcast, right, right. plays drums in Akaro, and they're a great band. They sound huge, they play on small stages, and we thought we'd give them a shot. They don't even have a record deal, but we thought we'd bring them out on tour because they were that good. Very impressive. Very good, and I think he was in Burning Silence one time before, the singer at least. All right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um... Congra now, this, congratulations on the success of your new album. Are you uh, bringing metalcore into the top ten? Wow, yeah. crazy, yeah. Who never thought that would happen? <laughs> Not and me. The sky's the limit, right? Uh, I hope so, yeah. It's a pretty cool thing. Uh, you guys are... Uh, you sold like 40,000, 40,000 records. It's a lot of records being sold today still, right? It is. Uh, I don't know. I'm as astounded as everyone else is. It's cool. It's really good that people still care, especially after quite a few singer changes. Um, you know, back problems. We are uh, behind the music is going to be at least five, six hours long. There's a, there's a lot of story to tell with us, but thankfully, thankfully, we have awesome fans that believe in us and still come out and help us. That's quite impressive being that today it seems like if you go away for even a month or two or six, you're sort of like old hat when you come back, whereas you guys sort of went away with your issues and whatnot and, and came back stronger than ever. Uh. <laughs> I don't know. Luck of the draw? I'm not sure. Uh, we just had that, you know, we, we had taken a good two years off which is a long time, and then wrote a record, so really like almost three years not being in the public. Everything changed, the whole scenery, all new bands are out now. Uh, it was a drastic, drastic difference when we got back into it, but you know, we had, uh, we had Jesse at the helm, lighting a fire under our butts, uh, giving it all the emotion he possibly can. And us old, jaded guys uh, got a swift kick in the ass, and now we've brought our show up to his uh, emotion level. Oh, nice, <laughs> nice. And uh, was the inspiration from the uh, the cover uh, inspired by the title as well? The cover was done before the title. Uh, a lot of times that'll happen because there's time pressures and getting stuff like that done. But as soon as I had finished uh, a couple of comps on the cover, Jesse gravitated towards the one that we picked and said, this is going to work perfectly with my lyrics and here's why. And then he gave me a list of a bunch of stuff and the reasons why it worked and the reasons why. Uh, it would just make everything come full circle. So uh, you can't, you know, debate anything like that. If if the guys believes in, in it that much, then that's the cover. <laughs> Is the fire of Jesse today the same fire uh, of the pr prior Jesse? I think there's more fire now uh, that he's had some time to grow up and really figure out what he wants to do in his life and this is what he wants to do. So he, he really knows where to put his energy these days. Uh, you don't bleed for me. That's, uh, is that uh, is that a song that you wrote, or do, do, how much uh, input did you have into writing that song? That song is the one song that um, our drummer, Justin, wrote for the oh, new okay. record. Um, 
and Jesse did all the lyrics to all the songs, so that's kind of his thing. Wow. Um, but it's just about fake politicians and uh, religious leaders and people who tell you what to do, even though they have no clue about you or your life, and just uh, demand things out of demand the impossible, really. Bleeding hearts. Bleeding hearts. Was his departure similar to Howard's departure? Uh, Jesse's? Jesse, was Jesse's departure similar to Howard's departure? No, not even a little bit. Very completely different things. And uh, how so? Uh, Jesse uh, wasn't sure how, you know, some people just aren't cut out for touring. I don't think he was prepared originally for the amount of touring, the amount of stress level that uh, goes on someone using their throat as their instrument. And um, he, he was just uh, young. He didn't know what was going on. Uh, Howard had been in the, tan the band for 10 years, and uh, it just was very clear that things weren't going to work out between us and him. So it was an amicable split. Very nice. And uh, how did the writing and recording differ from uh, Jesse this time and Howard? Uh, this time, all the music was finished, and we were still trying to figure out what we were going to do with the singer. So Jesse rolled in, um, heard the stuff, and loved it, and instantly started writing right then. Uh, so it's a bit different to go almost in reverse and have the lyrics last, but um, we write better when we just concentrate on one thing at a time. So having the music done first really wasn't that big of a deal for us. Maybe for Jesse it'd be different next time around. So he can have some say in how many choruses go into a song or structure wise, what might work better with his lyrics. You sound really pleased about Jesse and, and just everything. You seem to have a certain uh I don't know, like uh, an aura to you, a, a really positive. Well, it feels like a new band. I mean, we've been we've been a band for 14 years, and to say, wow, it feels like a brand new band after that much time together um, is a big deal. And uh, we are all super happy. We're just really excited to be where we're at right now uh, with a guy who really, really cares and puts us, puts us all into everything we do. It's just, uh, it feels great. That's awesome. Now, last night, apparently, there was uh, some gun violence outside the uh, venue where uh, bangers were shooting each other. Is that correct? You know, that's what I heard, but I was at the bar drinking, so I don't really know. Oh, it's a safer place. <laughs> it's a lot, lot safer. Now, you're an old punker or an old hardcore head, for sure, and you've probably been, to one, been in one or two pits in your life. Is that sure. correct? Absolutely. Have you ever had to knock somebody out that got out of line? Sometimes in the pit, people go in there looking for violence. Yeah, I am the least violent person you'll ever meet. Uh, I don't like knocking people out. I don't really even like going in the pit anymore. But when I was a kid and I didn't know what was going on, yeah, I'd throw punches, but never to hurt anybody, only to have fun. That's awesome. It still happens. I was I spent all of Slayer a couple of weeks ago in the pit, which is something I haven't done in a very long time. And, and uh, probably due to the lighting, I was able to avoid the knuckleheads. Hopefully, yeah, yeah, you gotta stay in the shadows and, yeah. and, and pick out the guys that are gonna hurt you and yeah. stay away from them. Absolutely, <laughs> let's really all about having fun. You wanna go to a show and not get put in the hospital, but hang out with your friends, drink some beers, and get off a little aggression. Um, some people take it to the extreme. Design or music, uh, if you had to, to, have to choose between the, the one or the other, which one would you, I know you're very involved with art and so forth. Yeah, I'm a graphic design by nature. I did four years of high school, technical high school, doing graphic arts. I did four years of college. I've had my own design company since 1992. Uh, it's what I'm going to do after the band. It's what I did before the band. So if you're asking me what my favorite thing to do is, it's probably artwork. I, I love it, but music and art go hand in hand. So it's, I, I don't think I could do one without the other. Is there any vinyl? Uh, the, the Roadrunner, does Roadrunner put out vinyl of your new album? Not a lot of times. Uh, mostly it's a European release. Uh, Germany does a lot of vinyl on our records. And they did definitely put out vinyl on the newest record, but it's scarce. It's pretty hard to find. And have you gotten an opportunity to contribute to the uh, the art or the, the design? Or is, is there any gatefold stuff of yeah. Kill Switch or anything? Oh, definitely a gatefold. I love doing big, massive artwork like that. Posters, I love, you know, twelve-inch records. Anything that's huge uh, is is a thrill. And then when you find you get it back and it's actually printed correctly, that's a match made in heaven. You must have <laughs> a monster record collection. There's a good amount. Yeah, yeah. I just got back into vinyl, and now there's a whole new set of stuff to collect. 
Vinyl's cooler because you don't find everything on vinyl, whereas tapes, everything's there, everything's out there. That's the part of the fun of being of going to a record store back in the day. You never knew what you're gonna find. Now you just go on iTunes and everything's at your fingertips. There's no mystery behind bands anymore. So uh, and uh, now. Death Ray Vision, that's another uh, happening band for you. Yeah, um, in that interim where Killswitch wasn't sure what was going on, that two-year interim, uh, I was just dying to play. Um, I wrote a bunch of really pissed off hardcore tunes, uh, like 90s hardcore, Chromags, Leeway, Agnostic Front, Madball, stuff like that, Bad Brains. And uh, sent it to my buddy Brian Fair, who used to be in my old band Overcast. He's now the singer of Shadows Fall. And I just said, I don't know anything about anything. I came up with these tunes. If you like them, let's, let's form a bar band and just do covers and right. maybe integrate some of these originals into uh, having fun. Let's have, let's have a good time. And he loved it. Uh, we instantly got Pete Cortese, who's in my old band, Overcast, to play guitar. Colin Conway from, from Kanai and Zach Wells um, from Raises in the Night. Um, and we started playing out doing some shows, just having a good time, playing covers. And uh, we put out an EP, got the attention of Bullet Tooth Records, which uh -huh. is Josh from Trust Kill's right. new label. And we put out a record. Man. Yeah, we, uh, we recorded a record last year and uh, just didn't have enough time to do a record release show. He's, that was one of the contingencies. Please do a record release show and then I'll put out your record. It almost took a whole year for us to get it together enough, you know, with all the touring and stuff like that, to have a record release show. Brian lives in Missouri. Oh, wow. Everyone else is in Massachusetts, so it's really hard for us to get sure. together despite all the touring that both bands are doing. So we just said, Brian, if we're going to fly you out, we're going to pay a couple hundred bucks uh, to fly you out for one show. We might as well do a tour. So we, uh, we did a 10-day tour with Akaro oh, nice. and uh, Sworn Enemy from New York City, another really cool uh, throwback band. And it was great. It was really fun. That happened right before this tour and just steamrolled it into another Kill Switch Engage tour. Sweet. And now are, you, uh, are you still using the same gear you've had for quite some time or is there any changes in your uh, setup? I switch around a lot. Um, Ibanez is always my mainstay base company. They rule. They're one of my favorite sponsors of all time. The nicest people in the world. They always hook me up. They have a signature out. Uh, my third signature they put out the, called the MDB3. And it's, uh, it's based off a Destroyer, which looks like a Gibson Explorer. So it's very metal looking, very cool. Um, as far as amps these days, I'm using EBS equipment, which is from Sweden. Uh, really, really great company, super, lots of attack to their amps. Uh, you don't really need many distortion pedals or anything. It's kind of just plug and go. Uh, 750 watts, way more wattage than I need on stage. Right. Uh, with a Fafner 2 is the name of the head that I'm using. Um, and I also use, uh, they have a smaller little compact version that I can take on a plane with me, throw in my backpack seven pounds. Wow. How sweet is that? Great. Uh, lastly, um, the Technographic Rusty Box is my favorite pedal of all time. And that's uh, one of the major additions to my sound that I've been using lately. Just a, a real boutique type of company uh, that puts out great work, but they only do a certain amount of pedals a year. Oh wow, like a Porsche or something. Right, exactly. Sweet, so finally, uh, do you have anything to say to anybody that might be watching this? Uh, I just wanna say thank you very much for believing in the band. Um, we could not do this without you guys, uh, the fans supporting us. And uh, we feel privileged and honored to be able to play for you guys each and every night. So thank you very much for your support and for the interview. Thanks.